Hello everybody, it is Ask Jesse Answer Time. Are you ready? I'm ready. If you're ready, let's get to it. Question number one comes to us from Diane Hall. And Diane says, I start the day by trying to be happy and positive, but then get sucked into the crap going on around me. I become negative and miserable. It then spirals with everyone else being negative. How do you break the cycle? Thanks, Jesse. It's a fantastic question, Diane. And so while I appreciate your effort to try to be happy to start the day, being happy is not something you have to try to do. You have to commit to doing it, which means that you have to be willing to... Let me put this another way. When we are allowing so many other people to affect us, that is basically like saying that our life is not in our control, that we are at the mercy of everybody else. Everybody's actions, everybody's words, they are just that. They're their actions, they're their words. And they're subject to our interpretation of them. How we interpret things can be good or bad, happy or sad, right? Have you ever read an email or, or had somebody tell you something and it's a compliment? And the way you interpret it, though, it sounds like they're being sarcastic or they're being not sincere or whatever it is. Because we put an interpretation on it that's not the most positive. So whatever somebody says or does, how we react is not about them. It's about our own interpretation. So first things you could do is choose to interpret their stuff differently. And just acknowledge that their stuff is their stuff and it's not has it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with you. You make it about you. So my suggestion to you is this, is when you're committing to being happy, take the same level of commitment you have to getting drawn into the negative stuff and apply that level of commitment to being happy. Because it takes a certain amount of commitment to be negative and allow yourself to draw into the negative stuff, right? It's something you don't want to do. It's something you acknowledge that it affects you in a bad way yet you still find yourself getting drawn into it. So you have to be pretty committed to getting drawn into it if you're doing something you don't want to do, right? Think about this. If somebody were to tell you to jump off the bridge, you're not going to do it. Unless they're either physically pushing you off, which likely is not going to happen. It's not happening in this case. Or unless you're fully committed to making the jump. Does this make sense? I'm not to say that you're a negative person at all. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is a behavior to get involved in negativity is a very strong behavior. And if you could take the same level of commitment you have to that behavior and apply it to being positive in the morning, you wouldn't be trying to be happy. You would be committing to being happy. And I think you'd see a radical difference. Great question. Number two comes to us from Nicole Drexler. And Nicole asks, I... I find that I've tried to be more forgiving and vulnerable in my interactions with friends and families and acquaintances this year. But I'm curious where to draw the line between those who continually drain your happiness and are not truly authentic, especially when it's hard to avoid certain ones that are physically present in your life. And boundaries are so important. And Nicole went on to say that she sometimes feels guilty about thinking of herself first other than others. You have to think of yourself first, you guys. You have to think of yourself first. Because somebody is family, because somebody's friends, does not give them a license to run your life. Nor, when you're doing it for them, when you're going and you're putting your stuff aside on their behalf, are you really doing it selflessly? No, you're doing it out of obligation, out of guilt. That's very selfish behavior. So by thinking that we're doing something selfless, we're actually quite selfish because we're engaging in behavior that we really don't want to do, but we're doing it out of obligation. If you're willing to run over and help somebody just because you're completely selfish and was having no impact on you other than joy because of the joy of helping, I'd say, great, go for it, thumbs up. When it's something else, I'd say, stop, stop, selfish alert, selfish alert. Okay, boundaries are crucial because without boundaries, people are just going to run rampant on it, right? If we didn't have rules when we played the lottery, if we didn't have rules, what would everybody do? They'd wait until the numbers were drawn and everybody would buy a ticket, fill in the winning numbers and turn them in. But we don't, we have a boundary, we have rules for that. You have to play by this time, they have to be in by this time, so when the numbers are drawn, it's the, the numbers fall as they go. And same in sports, if we didn't have rules, if we didn't have boundaries, people would just do whatever they could to win. So boundaries are crucial because what boundaries allow you to do is it allows you to be there and help others from a selfless place, a place of love, a place of joy, by being selfish for yourself first. If you really want to be selfless for other people, you got to be selfish first. And that means recognizing when things and people and ideas and concepts and energy is not in your best interest. Because what happens is you give, 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 and then you have nothing to give to those who really deserve it. These are the friends who don't suck your energy. 
These are your kids, your family members, etc., etc., etc. So boundaries are crucial because it allows you to really get clear and distinguish what's most important to you and what's just behavior that you're doing because you feel obligated to do it. Okay? Awesome questions this week, you guys. Thank you so much for asking. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please share it with your friends and family if you found value in it. And we'll be right back here again next time, same place, same bat channel next week. And I look forward to chatting with you guys then. Have a good one.